All right, so welcome all. This one is on Google Meets, how to schedule. Um, and uh, yeah, how to start, how to schedule, all the different ways that we can get going with, with that. I am going to paste in the chat window a slide deck that I've been working on this morning. I was actually working on it for a couple of things, a couple other reasons, but um, I, I thought I'd share that because all of the information that I'm going to go through is in there. It's missing some images, it's missing some videos and stuff like that, but all of the details are in there. You can see it and uh, and go through at your own pace there and uh, feel free to share that as well. I'm gonna continue working on it a little bit, but I kind of want to walk through uh, and make sure that everybody has uh, everything in there. So we're gonna look at, at four different methods. The four methods we're gonna look at is uh, Google Meet in Classroom. We're gonna look at uh, just using the regular Meet. Then we're gonna look at the uh, calendar events and then finally Gmail. I would say of all of them, Gmail is uh, the simplest, but it's also just for quick meetings. It's it's not something that you can schedule. It's just a really quick, I need to join or I need to, to start a meeting and get in through there. And I would say probably for working with students, the most secure, the one that we probably want to use most is um, in classroom, is meet in classroom. So I'm going to open up my classroom and share my screen here and we'll get going right away. Uh, if there's any questions, if anything pops up that, that you are wondering about, uh, please let me know. And uh, just throw throw a little message in the chat window there and I'll, I'll keep an eye on it here. Okay, so we're in the classroom. This is by far, I think, the, the simplest and the easiest for everybody because this meet is always here. Inside of our classroom, you need to turn it on separately for every single one of the classrooms that you have, but up, up in the settings, and down into general, you're gonna see right here where it says meet the ability to turn it on. Let me zoom in a little bit here, to turn it on for classrooms. Now I already have this one turned on, so the meet is already showing the meet link. Those of you who are in the one with the breakout sessions, you should notice something similar about the, uh, the URL there. If you notice it's meet.google.com slash lookup, and then the uh, 10 random characters after that. If you take a look up at the URL that you're actually in, of the meeting you're in, it is meet.google.com slash, and then three characters dash four characters dash three characters. There might be some little uh, authorized user stuff at the end, but really that, that code is the secret. So the difference here, inside this, the lookup is used, which means that this is actually just the nickname for the meet inside of this classroom which gives us the advantage of using the nicknames and stuff like that, um, which is until we start it, it's not out there and available. It's just kind of hanging out. So we'll get into a little bit with that when we look at the Google Meet. But to me, uh, super positive inside here. The other option you have inside here is to make it visible to students or not. You may want to not make it visible if you don't want the kids to be able to pop in or try and pop in at different points, or if you want to throw it in a calendar link, I don't really see the issue with having it available. To me, it makes it very simple for the kids to get there because we talk to them about how it goes. Uh, and then we can always grab that code and post it in another place. Make sure when you turn this on, you hit save up here and it'll save it up there. We're going to use that link later. So I'm not going to close this screen, but you'll notice right here is your meet link. This is on the main page of the Google Classroom. Or if you pop up in your Classwork tab, you'll also know that you have the Meet icon right here. And so you can use that to jump into the Meet as well. So again, super simple, very easy to use. Now, I'm gonna pop back into the settings. And I'm gonna grab this one. We might as well finish off here. And I'm gonna copy this. Now, one of the things that I know using uh, calendar is great for is that we can create that reoccurring event. So every Tuesday at 9 a.m., we're gonna have a meeting with our students, uh, or maybe we have a meeting with different students at different times, but it's always gonna be at the same event. So let's go into class or into calendar now. And I'm gonna create an event. 
going to go to more options so I get the full screen of this. So what I would do is let's say weekly meeting. I'm going to leave, I mean, this information right here, obviously the days and the times and everything we need to schedule, we can make our weekly repeat, repeat. I like to do custom. And so I'm going to repeat it every Wednesday, repeat it once or sorry, every Wednesday. And I'm going to end it after 13 occurrences. Or maybe I say, you know what? I don't need this. And this is probably more likely. I don't need this after June. I can't remember which was the last day of classes. But let's say the 24th. After the 24th, I'm done. It's going to repeat once per week. And then we can say done. It does that repeating. I'm not going to touch the meet here. We'll come back to that. And we'll look at that in just a second here. I'm not going to touch that. But what I am going to do is come down to my description and I'm going to paste in here, use this link to join the meet. And I'm going to paste that link in there. So again, take a look at that. We use the lookup. So that's the same one that's going to be available from our classroom. The only thing we need to remember is that if you do a reset, if for some reason you're not comfortable, the meet stops working, uh, you figure somebody else is, is getting into it or something like that. The only thing you need to remember is you're going to need to go back and update all of the ones in uh, your calendar. So you're just going to need to change that. But we drop that in there. It's the lookup one, not the actual link to the meet, which would come from here. And then I can start adding my guests. So then I can add all of my classroom or whatever it is. I could actually go and just grab all of their emails out of Google Classroom and drop that into here. They get the meet in their, um, in their calendar and it's easy for them to schedule. Or maybe you wanna send that link to mom and dad or something like that, remembering that the kids are the one, only ones that are gonna be able to get into this one here. So, so it's a simple way to grab that link and post it in here. The other thing you could do, well, we'll come back to another one there. So I'm gonna stop really quickly here. Questions with scheduling using Google Meeting Classroom to schedule it through the calendar, anything there? Nope. Okay, we'll keep going. If you do have one, that's okay. I kind of I kind of go a little bit quick here. So if you do have a question, feel free to stop and, and come back to that. So uh, the other stuff in here, this is all hyperlinked if you do are looking at the document. So all of these italicized ones here are going to link to a certain slide. So you can just come back here. If we go to present mode, I'll show you really quickly here. You'd be able to jump to setting up a meeting classroom and then going back to your table of contents right here. So you can jump back to your table of contents and go back and forth that way. So if you do want to share this with somebody else, it's it, just let them know that. I, I haven't had a chance to finish the description. I'm going to put some, some more detail into this slide. Uh, I want to pop down to meet. Let's go down to just regular meet. Meet.google.com. Okay. There are two ways inside of here that we can create a meet. One of them is we just need a meet. We don't care about any of the information that is uh, being shared there. We don't care if this meet is open forever and always. We just need a meet. We're gonna click join, and then we're gonna click continue. It's gonna pop open a new meet for us. I'll turn these off. And we have our link information here. We're gonna click join now. Mm, yeah, that's okay. We're gonna click join now and it's gonna bring us into the link. We can copy and join information. So I'm gonna copy this information right here and we can now use that information and we can post it into a calendar event if we want. So we'll post it in there to join the video meet. Here's this link. Actually, I'm going to leave that other one there as well because I want to show you guys the difference between the two URLs. Uh, use this link and, and mine still has the phone turned on. Uh, yours that's been turned off or the there's, yeah. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't actually have that in there and I wouldn't share that with the kids because I don't want a long distance bill coming my way or a parent complaining that the kid joined through the phone and now they have a long distance bill. If I was gonna call a kid and I'll show you how to do that, I would actually dial out to them as opposed to them dialing into me. 
So we can post this in here as well. Notice the difference between these two URLs. This one has lookup, this one doesn't. This one, the long code or the, the nickname here is actually just a bunch of random characters, no dashes. This one, the meeting code is three characters, a dash, four characters, a dash, and then three more characters. That's always the telling feature there when you look at it, um, aside from the lookup, is, is that difference there. The minute I started this meet, that meet is open always and forever. Google has not demonstrated a way that we can physically close meets and make them never available again. And so because of that, and I don't know if they reuse these meets later on or anything, there's a lot of them that they're creating, but there's a lot of meets that they're going through. So I would say that uh, by giving, sorry, by giving this, not that I would say, by giving this link, you are giving them a link to a meeting that is open always for, and forever. I wouldn't use that in calendar. I wouldn't email that to them um, because by doing that, they can always get in. So, but just so you're aware, that's there. Uh, oops. And uh, that's another way that you can schedule it using Meet to create it and then uh, scheduling it in calendar or sharing that link. The other thing we could have done there, let me grab that, is I could have taken that link copied it, and if we were already in a meeting or I had an email or a chat chain going out, maybe some hangout messages going on, I could just paste that in there like I did in the chat menu now, and now that meet is out there and available. Again, realizing that that one's always open. So gonna come back up here, and uh, I wanna show you how to invite people by the phone because I think that that's another thing that, that some people want to do. We don't, like I said, I don't necessarily want people calling this phone number because generally it's an Ontario number if it's in Canada, it's somewhere out east. It might be down in Idaho or it might be out in New Jersey or New York. Um, but yeah, this one says US. So I would suspect it was probably a New Jersey number. Um, but I wouldn't want them calling that. What I would do instead is jump up to my, uh, up here in the top, my participants window. I have nobody in there. I'm gonna click on add people. I'm gonna go over to call, and then I'm gonna enter their phone number. So if I was asking, if I wanted somebody, somebody said, we have four kids in our house and we only have one computer, is there any way that my student can call in? This is a way that I would say, absolutely. We're gonna throw in the phone number and we're gonna hit call. I'm gonna cancel this call shortly here because I don't actually want it to dial through because then you guys will hear a ring. But it would actually call the phone and they would be joining up. They could mute their microphone from inside of there. They could do all that. So you can still, and that, that ability is still available to you. So that's another way that you can bring students into the call or sorry, into the meet. All right, so we're just going to uh, get rid of that. We'll pop in here. I, I'm pretty comfortable that you guys are, are good with joining meets, clicking on the starting a meet and joining a link, a meet. I'm going to end that one, this other one that's going on. I'm going to show you how to do it with a nickname uh, and then having the students join a meet. So, um, okay. So using meet.google.com and I, I use a URL. You can also go up to the waffle and click there. Let's say we wanted to use it with a nickname. So a nickname is exactly what we were doing in the breakout rooms and exactly the same tool that's being used in classroom. So we're gonna go same situation, but this time we're gonna give it a nickname. So I'm gonna call this one grade six, um, let's say, uh, what's one of our great, well, DDS, I know I saw Chantel is in here, so DDS. And then maybe I wanna throw in just to make it more so, I'm gonna throw in Quasni at the end. You know, make this as long as you can want. You can say, you know, the black dog barks at midnight, whatever you want to do, you can throw it in there. So I'm going to copy that one because I want that. So I'm going to control C to make sure that I don't forget that nickname. I'm going to continue and it's going to bring me into the meet. Now notice it does join now. It does still create this code up top. Okay, so please be aware that that code is still created. I'm gonna close this down so we don't get all bunged up here. It's still created, it's still there. I believe that after we leave, it shuts it down, okay? 
Um, but like I said, if the students grab that, if they're if they know that it's there, they may still be able to access that later on. So what I'm going to do, I have the nickname. I'm going to go back to my calendar event. I'm going to stick with my calendar event, but you could do this in a document or you could throw this into a chat window or something like that. And I'm going to say to join the meet, use the nickname grade six DDS Kwasney. And I'm going to send that to the students. You could, if you want, add some additional information, maybe bold that one, and then maybe add some more information. For example, uh, we're going to join a meet with a nickname. So I'm just going to copy this little part on there. This is from the, the uh, slide deck that I shared. I'm going to go to my calendar and I'm going to paste that in there. Now I got to do a little formatting. So let's, uh, Let's change that up to join a meeting with a nickname participants tap. So let's just go back to here and say we want to do tap start or join. Well, actually, even before that, we want to go to go to meet.google.com, tap join or start a meeting, and then enter the nickname. So maybe we'll do all of these steps. Then enter the nickname. Maybe I want to copy that down here and add that down here as well so they know. We just I'm just trying to think of ways that we can make it as easy as possible for our students to join. And then now they should be able to do all that. We can actually actually one more if we want. We could highlight this and we could add that link into there. So now inside of that calendar description, they have the link to the meet. They have the nickname and they have the instructions on how to get there. Now, this doesn't stop them from taking that information and sharing it with somebody else. Anybody with a palace or email address could get into one of these meets. But what it does stop them is adding other people onto the guest list uh, or, you know, knowing the actual meet link that we have. So if you find that other people are getting in, excuse me, you're going to have to change your nickname for your meets. But other than that, you can keep this one continuous and, and use it from there, so. All right, so I'm gonna close that meet so we're not chugging along. No more chat messages, please feel free if you have a question to either chime in or just throw it in there. The next one is calendar. So we've been hanging out in calendar and we have skipped the most obvious way within calendar to add a Google Meet. And that's using, they've changed it to a big blue button. It used to be a drop down. Now it's a big blue button there. You can add that meet video conferencing and click that. And now students have the ability to come into here and they will have a button that looks just like this in their calendar event that says join with Meet. The minute I clicked add Google Meet video conferencing, it created this meet right here. And you can see the URL is already created. It already has the code, the CBW dash, so on, so on, so on. That meet is active. Students can go into there today and start connecting, and they can go in there a month from now and start connecting. So that meet is already always active. One of the things you may want to consider is down here, and I should show you how to get this. There's a little, you can remove it. Obviously, you can take conferencing away. You can click this drop down right here to look at your conferencing details. That'll be the meet for your, or the link for your meet. And down below here, there's a phone number. You guys won't see that like we talked about. There is add live stream. So if you just wanna have a meet, like I'm live streaming now, you just wanna have a meet. You don't want people to participate. You just want them to hush and listen. You can do that live streaming and then you don't need to worry about uh, them chiming in or not chiming in. The other thing I'm thinking about with this is maybe we have a Google Meet for most of our students, but we wanna add live streaming for that one student that's always chiming in or always you know, in the chat window or doing something like that. Maybe we wanna send them a special one where they can only live stream it. Mom and dad are on board, everybody's okay with that. We can add live streaming, copy that, send that individual link to them and leave them off the guest list or uh, leave them uh, out, of, out of the invite. We just need to remember 
that in our meet, you got to go down just like you record it and you have to turn on live streaming. So just something to think about, something to remember there, but you can live stream. I think we can live stream up to 100,000 100, users. Is it 100,000 or 10,000? Uh, they all have to be Palliser email addresses though. So I don't know that we would ever hit that uh, 10,000 or 100,000. I can't, again, I can't remember with just Palliser people. The unfortunate thing is we can't share it outside. That's a Google uh, a Google thing. We can't share it outside of where we are. So I'm going to pop down here. So that's setting it up in calendar. Uh, the last one we have is in Gmail. If we look at Gmail, and I'm sure you guys have all seen this. Hopefully, I don't have any nasty Mia email here. I think we're all good. Over on the left-hand side, we have meet, and it's in here, the two buttons, start a meeting. If you click on start a meeting, it pops up right to this screen, and we've seen this before. We'll be able to run through all of the same processes inside of here. The other option we have is join a meeting. So if we have join a meeting and we wanted to use our grade six, actually I might have it, no, I don't. Grade six DDS Quasni code. We can use that short code and we can join from there as well. So again, it's just a method to get in there. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of that one, um, but you are able to use it. You, we are able to put that in there. So easy one there and the same, same situation, same settings, everything is the same. So, um, okay. Any questions? I'm going to stop presenting my screen. Any questions coming out there? Is there something I missed? Is there a question that you were looking for that you were like, I was hoping that I would be able to do this and that you would show us a way? Okay. In that case, the last two things that I have um, to sort of discuss here is number one, closing meets. We've already talked about closing meets and that you cannot close a meet based on a link. That being said, if you use the nickname, so that's either the meeting classroom or a, a URL where you use the lookup and then random characters like we did for breakout rooms, or you just create a meet and you give that nickname. As long as you, the teacher, is are the last person to leave, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little caveat on there. I'm gonna say the teacher quotations. Um, but as long as you are the last person to leave, that meet is closed, and that nickname will not open up again until you reopen that meet. So one of the things to consider is using the nickname, using the meeting classroom, uh, or the lookup with the the random uh, thing there um, to put it in there. Now. For meeting classroom, actually for any of these, if you have an EA in your classroom or you have a co-teacher or another adult who has a palliserSD.ab.ca email, okay, they can start that meet. So they, students, the PRS 26, they have been disabled. They can't start the meet, but our adults can start the meet. So that means if they go there first, they're like, you know what? I'm up and it's 7.30. I'm going to jump in anyway. I know the meet's not till 9.30, but I'm just going to get in there and leave it open so I don't forget later. They are the organizer of that meet. So the first adult there is the organizer using the nickname. And because of that, they're the ones that have the ability to mute and remove individuals. And they are the ones who get the recording. So if you record your meets, the organizer of the meet gets the recording put into their meet recordings drive or folder in their drive. Whatever, when you're using nicknames, whichever adult is there first, they become the organizer and they would get that information, so. Okay, and most of my meets are with adults and I use the create button in my calendar and provide them the video conferencing. Is this the most, is this? Yeah, absolutely. There's no issue with that one at all um, because, all you're doing is uh, you're, you're not worried if they come back there later anyway. So I wouldn't necessarily concern myself if, uh, if you're sharing it in that manner. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so we talked about closing meets. That's all good. 
And then the last one is, is, and I've had a few questions about this specifically around parent-teacher interviews and the idea that uh, can we invite families to our parent-teacher interviews and non-Google people? Absolutely you can. If you take your Meet, well, I mean, one thing, and I haven't dug into it too deep, Meet is available for all users now. So any Google user, you still have to have an account, they can use that. Google is looking into some issues with regards to this um, because is there anything stopping external people from inviting our students into Meet and then them accidentally clicking on the link or clicking on it just to go see and something happen? They're looking at some issues with re regards to that and some security stuff. I'm, I'm following some links on the back end there. But I mean, that's one where we got to teach our kids to make sure they're aware with what's going on. But that all being aside, you can send the meet link to anybody. So you can send that link. They'll get the email. You can invite them through meet if you've already started it or create a meet and send them the link. When they click on it, they just, well, let me show you here. I'm going to take the meet that we're using. I'm gonna share my screen. And I'm gonna open up an incognito window. So an incognito window is like a window that nobody's logged in with. This is just a random one. So we're gonna paste that in there. Go right back to the sharing information. And this is what it would look like for somebody who's a non-Google user if they click on it. One, they have to allow the ability to use that. I'm just gonna, don't worry about that. So it's going to ask them what their name is. It doesn't have a restriction on that name. So if a student, you know, wants to put in, you know, Mr. Poo Poo Head and, and they're using a, a non Google account, it will show up as Mr. Poo Poo Head. So you, you kind of, if you're working with families, it's important that they realize this as well. First names are great. Full names I find are better. There's no big deal. Then it's going to go the ask to join. When it asks to join, and I'm going to bring over this window now. So this is the one that we're in. You get this pop up. There's a little bing, a little doorbell in your ear. And then you get this pop up that says someone wants to join the meeting. Jason, unverified. We can't say who it is. You can deny entry or you can admit them. So Jason Shady, I'm going to deny him entry and he can't get in. That doesn't mean that they can't keep starting and keep trying, but we're not worried about that in this scenario. If we're worried about parent-teacher interviews or inviting somebody who's outside of maybe a presenter into our Google Meet from uh, you know Alberta tomorrow, say for example, or some other uh, some other corporation that you bring somebody in, you can do that. Share it. They get the knock, or you get the knock. They get the information. You say accept, and then they're in. And no big deal. They don't have to have a Google account. So, so I am two minutes short here uh, of time. But uh, as always, I will stick around. Uh, that's all I have to say. So if anybody has any questions, I'm going to stick around here. I'll leave the recording going just for a bit longer. Um, and then I'll cut that off. But thanks. And uh, tomorrow, I think we have uh, password managers, which I'm excited for. So, But regardless, uh, thank you guys for coming and uh, I'll stick around for questions. So. No worries, everybody. All right then, well, I'm going to stop the recording.